I'm Maryam Shaheen, and I've been making films about Gaza for Al Jazeera English since 2006. When I moved there in 2005, Gazans were beginning to recover from a 38-year occupation by Israel. People were hopeful that their lives would improve. But in the end, their dreams have been destroyed, and all that remains are echoes of a lost Gaza. Israel's 2023 war on Gaza claimed the lives of thousands of children. Children have always been the most cherished blessing of Palestinian families, many of whom feel that a life without them is incomplete. In 2007, we filmed with a Palestinian fertility doctor, helping couples fulfill their greatest wish. <coughs> Triplets Sarah, Ahmed and Huda are the latest of Gaza's 5,000 test tube babies. <laughs> Their conception came at great expense and brought much joy to this family of Palestinian refugees. In 1997, Dr. Tharwat al-Halu introduced in vitro fertilization treatment to Gaza. Since then, he has been a godfather of many Palestinian miracle babies. But social acceptance of IVF was slow in coming. Ragda Khawaja had four IVF treatments two of which were successful. She was mother to three-year-old Noor and to six-months-old triplets. Although social concerns remained, IVF treatment was approved by religious leaders in Gaza. Yasser and Mahassan Sakka had been married for 15 years and feared a lifetime of ostracization if Mahassan didn't conceive. They had borrowed heavily to finance the next round of IVF treatment. And in their case, the failure to conceive was diagnosed as a problem with Yasser's sperm. Because of this, Mahassan's fears of abandonment, if she remained childless, had lessened. <laughs> Many in Gaza made great sacrifices to assure their dreams of having children came true which makes the 2023 mass killing of Gaza's children all the more tragic. Despite the economic blockade on the Gaza Strip and resulting poverty, childcare was always given priority. 
and children with disabilities had special schools and care. In 2007, I visited Atfaluna, a Gaza school for the hearing impaired. Congratulations. We started at absolute zero, real pioneers. We were five women in the beginning, five Palestinian women. And uh, we got it together. And when I look around today, 15 years, honestly, it's, uh, I can't believe that this happened. I really can't. Geraldine Shawa was joined by teachers and staff working with her at the Atfaluna Society for Deaf Children. It was Gaza's gateway for the hearing impaired. If institutions like Atfaluna do not look after the special education needs of, of children who are deaf, then these children will simply not go to school. And this was the case prior to the establishment of Atfaluna. Deaf children just didn't go to school. So for the past decades, the deaf of Gaza, adults and children, have had a place to go to study, work, and play. While they're at home and this an attack takes place, they feel it, they can't necessarily hear it, but they will feel the impact of the explosion very often. They'll, their ears will, will really hurt them and hurt them badly because um, any hearing aid wearer has what is called an ear mold inside the ear and it's quite you know, uh, compressed in, inside the ears. So if you have a loud explosion, they scream in pain. They had a, had a really, really sad existence. They were very marginalized in, inside their homes because no one could communicate with them. And there were no programs, of course, to teach the parents uh, sign language. So the sign language at home would basically be eat, uh, go bathroom, you know, things like that. Very, very rudimentary um, sign language. So there was no language development and there was a lot of social dysfunction. Atfaluna helped bring about meaningful change for the hearing impaired in Gaza. Abir spent 11 years in a boarding school for the deaf in Jordan before returning to Gaza and becoming Atfaluna's most popular teacher. Back in 2007, few Gazans could make ends meet because of the economic blockade imposed by Israel. Many nutritional necessities, including milk, were increasingly hard to find and, when available, astronomically expensive. But this family still had one constant source of income, a beer, their deaf daughter who provided for them, all ten of them. One of my enduring impressions of life in Gaza has always been the strength and endurance of its people, and perhaps unexpectedly, the role that women play in keeping this besieged part of Palestine on its feet. Omaya Juha was one of these women. I was born in the city of Gaza in 1972, but I am part of a family of refugees from Al Muharraqa, one of Palestinian villages that was attacked by the invading Zionists in 1948. Uh, Growing up in Gaza, we lived in a very simple home. I remember how the rain used to dribble through the roof. 
Our family was dispersed. My father was far away, and my mother overburdened with responsibilities. I captured this unpleasant life with my quill even before I went to school. Children appreciate art and understand cartoons. Children recognize me. They know me as Umayya Juha, the cartoonist. Umayya had one daughter, Noor. During my secondary schooling, I began reading newspapers and, of course, the cartoons on the back page of Al-Quds, which was the newspaper I read every day. I would see the drawings of the artists Naji Al-Ali and Mahmoud Khail and be fascinated by them, although I was very young. Editorial cartoonists are revered as journalists and artists throughout the Arab world. One of the most recognizable symbols of Palestinian society is Handala, a ragged 10-year-old Palestinian refugee boy, always viewed from behind, observing the world. Handala's creator, Naji Al-Ali, was assassinated in London in 1987, his body riddled with bullets. His killer remains unknown. Even though he has been dead for many years now, may his soul rest in peace, his pen is alive, and his work addresses many of our contemporary issues. Every cartoonist has his own style. A cartoon is about a single event or moment. Omaya was the sole woman in a club of at least 12 cartoonists, whose work was published in newspapers right across the occupied West Bank and Gaza. In one instance, one of Omaya's cartoons was believed to have prompted a violent backlash. After an Israeli invasion of Gaza in 2004, she depicted Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon as a boastful politician, oblivious to dead Israeli soldiers, standing decapitated behind him. The newspaper Al Risala printed Omaya's cartoon, and the next day Israel bombed Al Risala newspaper. While badly damaged, El Risala began printing again, and Omaya continued to be one of their featured cartoonists. For the first day of Ramadan, 2008, she depicted the bloody Hamas Fatah split. She drew a Palestinian mother on her balcony, praying to heaven that her children might eat their Ramadan meal at the same table together again. Unfortunately, we are living in a time when our people are divided and splintered. It's a good time for a cartoonist to become both a commentator and observer, and to use one's influence. At the end of 2008, Israel bombarded the Gaza Strip with minimal resistance from Palestinian fighters. It left around 1,400 Palestinians and 13 Israelis dead and destroyed much of Gaza's infrastructure. The air, land and sea blockade continued after the war. Even the most basic supplies were prevented from entering Gaza. This is the story of one man I met in 2009 who worked against all odds to fix his desperately broken world. أنا من سكان معسكر الشاطئ أنا عون أسرة من ثمان أفراد عندي خمس بنات وثلاث أولاد وأنا مهنتي مكانيكي أبويا أبويا كان فتح ورشة كنت أخذ الغداء وأوديه إياه 
أقضي يومي أسحب حالي وأرجع على البيت أكمل دراستي وما نضلنا لأنه كان جو احتلال وكنا يخوفونا من اليهود ودير بالك وما تطلعوش في 2007 ضربوا شركة الكهرباء وبلشت عاد هالقيتها ما فيش إنارة بلشت الناس يعني تشتري مولدات بلشت تيجي الموتسيكلات والمولدات الموتورات والجنراتور بلشت الشغل يعني بعديها طبعا خلص انشهرنا دار الداي عالم انه بيصلحوا موتسيكلات يعني احنا الوحيدين في غزه بنصلح اللي هو الموتسيكلات والمولدات يعني الميكانيكي الكويس ما هو بده خبرة يعني أبا عن جدا أبويا كان عمره 15 سنة ولا 13 سنة وهو بيشتغل ميكانيكي وهذه شغلة وراثة عندنا يعني زي ما بقولوا الميكانيكي عشان تصل تكون ميكانيكي بدك عمل أقل حاجة 30 و 40 سنة لما تفهم التقنية أو الشغل الصح تبعت الميكانيكي مش أي واحد بدخل ميكانيكي لازم يكون شغل الميكانيكي واضح ان كانت عنده مشكله في الـ 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 الاله من جوا يعالجها اذا كان بدوش يفتح الاله وبدي يشغلها سمعه لصوت الاله هذه اللي شغاله بتقول له ايش المشكله تبعتنا يعني بده يكون خبير فني معتمد Every week, Munzer rode down to Gaza's southernmost city on the Egyptian border, Rafah. Here, he found motorbikes and generators smuggled in through tunnels from Egypt. The motorcycles entered the day they opened the gate. The people who did the jobs in Egypt, or three jobs, they started to bring the bags and the motorcycles. والموتسيكلات والمولدات A network of underground tunnels from Gaza to Egypt became one of the only ways to bring in essential goods. شغل الأنفاق يعني كلها هيته شغل سحب بيجوا مكسرين إذا أنا بدي أجيب عشر مواتير أو عشر مولدات حيطلع منهم ثلاثة أو أربعة مكسرين قبلنا بالسلام وقبلنا في المعاهدات اللي بتصير بيننا وبين اليهود بس إحنا مش شايفين أي مقابل يعني مش شايفين لا فك حصار لا فك معابر مش شايفين أي حاجة اللي تحسسنا إنه إحنا يعني عايشين زي بقى الناس The three-week 2008-2009 war left many of Gaza's young people despondent and without hope. But as so often in this Mediterranean part of Palestine, they found ways to cope and improve their dire circumstances. محمد جمال الجخبير من سكان مخيم خان يونس قطاع غزة بمارس رياضة باركور ومعناتها اللي هو تخطي الحواجز والأمور هذه
انا اول شيء اسمي عبد الله الشاصي يعني عمره 22 سنه سكان مخيم خان يونس بالاجين انا في البدايه كنت بمارس رياضه كره السله ما كنت يعني بلعب بالبازا شويه خفيف فحكى لي عبد الله انه في رياضه هيك هيك باركور ومعناتها اللي هو تخطي الحواجز والامور هذه بدا الامر بشكل بسيط يعني ما كناش متوقعين انه الرياضه هذه تنغرس فينا بالشكل هذا يعني انا ممكن انط عن حاجز بحركه والمعي نط بحركتي يعني هي بس تيجي كيف تط الحاجز باي طريقه ممكنه يعني في حركه جمباز قفز عادي في حركه باركور والباركور هي فلسفه يعني من اول لاخر يمكن واحد يطلع من حاجه بطريقه ثانيه يعني مش كل واحد يمكن يطلع حاجز بنفس الطريقه في مشكله في الازدحام السكاني يعني في كل عائله بتلاقي في البيوت بتلاقي 20 نفر في البيت الواحد و... طبعا حياتنا في المخيم حياة يعني بسيطة وبدائية البيوت كلها أغلبها أسبست وهيك يعني نعتمد يعني بغالب الأحيان في المخيمات على اللي هو المساعدات اللي بتجينا من وكالة الغوث والوكالات الدولية مش بس مش بس إنه الواحد بيكون مبسوط بل بحس حاله يعني عمل شغلة يعني قليل من الناس بتقدر تسويها يعني بحس إنه مش شغلة مثيرة كتير يعني إنه أنا بدي أخاطر بحياتي أو بدي أخاطر بصحتي عشان أنفذ حركة أو أو شغلة ما حدش عملها قبلية إنه أنا أكون مميز دائما <تصفيق> سيب ابعد انزل ابعد سيب خلص محمد اعصابك انزل يا عم سيب بدي الف وجهي يا زلمه نزلوه 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 يا محمد اعصابك خلص سيب الرياضه هذه كانت يعني تعطينا دفعه كبيره في انه نصمد قدام كل هالحواجز هذه وانه ما ما نضعفش في اي لحظه ولا نخلي الـ 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 الاحتلال هذا انه يسيطر علينا باي فكر وباي شكل. يعني ما يعني كل انسان في مشاكل، ما بيقدر يطلعها انها صعب انه انه الحياه بتكون صعبه من حواليه، اذا كانت مش من الحروب او من الحصار موقوف في داخل الانسان. كبد يعني الله سيدي عايش بكتاب بس الامور هذه يعني نقدر نحاول نطلع منها يعني بايدينا احنا بحلم انه لقدام الواحد يقدر طبعا يسافر لبرا يشارك في بطولات وفي مسابقات عالميه بتصير في في مختلف دول العالم واي واي حدا حب يشارك فيها بيقدر باستثناءنا احنا لانه هنا طبعا ما احنا منعزلين عن العالم الخارجي يعني احنا في قفص من كل من كل جهه احنا محاصرين يعني من الشمال من الشرق من الجنوب من الغرب وين ما تروح في حصار During the 2023 war on Gaza, I knew that Mohammed was living in Sweden with his family, and Abdullah was in Italy. Geraldine lived in the United States. But I was sadly unable to contact any of the other beautiful Gazans who had shared their life stories with me. I felt heartbroken thinking about them and their families, who may well be suffering under the Israeli bombardment that has destroyed so many lives.